Okay, first grade, you have already done your first one where we did something very easy. We did an easy ground, we did a sun, we did a moon, and we did some clouds and some stars. If you finish that in class, we're gonna move on to our second draft, and we're going to give you some things that may be a little bit more challenging, especially for those of you that thought that the first painting was a little bit too easy. Before we start painting, again, what we wanna do is we wanna get our name on it. So the front of our paper has two little black marks on the very front. That's the front of our paper. So we're gonna flip our paper over and on the back side, we're gonna write our first name. And then your class code will always be one and then the first letter of your teacher's name. If you're not sure what it is, you can look up at the whiteboard and I'll have it written down for you. Once your name is on your paper, you can flip it back over to where it's white and we see the two little marks for where our ground should start and where our ground should end. Now in the first one, we just did a nice straight line, keeping it very, very simple. So our next step up for our medium version would be to do a curve line so it looks more like a hill. Again, we're gonna use our paintbrush and our paints to do it on our project. You're grabbing the bigger paintbrush that's clear and has the blue tip. Once you have your water and your paints, we also have the larger brush that we use for the ground, cloud, moon, and sun. We're gonna use that same brush, we'll get it wet. We need to load up our brush 10 to 15 times with our green. I'm gonna start painting on the first black mark, and this time I'm going to do a curve for the top of my hill. Before we fill this in, again, a great thing to start practicing and getting better at is outlining our shape. So I'll come down on the sides and I'll paint across the bottom. This is great practice because as you get older, your shapes are going to be harder and when we're doing harder shapes, we wanna go slower so we get that nice outline so anybody looking at our painting knows exactly what they're looking at. Once your shape is outlined, we can load up our brush one last time. We'll paint the inside by pulling, lifting, pulling, lifting, never back and forth. It's not the same as when you color with a crayon or a marker or a colored pencil. We wanna pull, lift, pull, lift. You can flip your brush, pull, lift, pull, lift. Never get more paint or more water if your brush is still wet or there's still paint on it. Once it's starting to get hard to fill in your white, now you can grab a little more water, grab a little bit more paint, and finish filling it in. The next two colors we'll be using are yellow and orange, so please take your large brush to the sink, clean it out with soap and water.
Our next detail is the exact same. We're going to go ahead and add our sun. If you were like me and you put your sun up high for your first painting, this is a great time to experiment and try looking at moving it and seeing if you like it better. Please remember though, we want our suns big. It should be filling up a good majority of our sky. This is way too small. This is way too big. It should be almost the size of some of your hands because they're pretty small. So I have mine up on the upper left, so I'm gonna switch it for this one and I'm gonna put it down lower. And I'm gonna grab my brush and my yellow paint. I have a clean brush because I cleaned the green off with soap and water. I have clean water. I'm going to spin my brush. I'm going to paint my circle. Again, if your yellow is really light, it means that you're using a lot of water and not a lot of paint. So I have a lot of water, but not a lot of paint. That's why the yellow is really hard to see. So I'm not going to add more water to my brush, but I am gonna add more paint to it. And it should make it brighter to add paint, but no more water. Again, because we're going to be adding more things to the sky and some of the sun is going to get covered up by the buildings and people that we draw, we're not gonna spend any time adding any sun rays. Once your sun is done, we're gonna go on to orange. And because orange is darker than yellow, we can just clean our brush right here in our blue cup. 10 to 15 spins on the bottom. And now I can add orange to my brush. We can do the same thing as we did in our first painting for those of you that finished that and you can decide where you want your moon. Again, we're going to do our moon a crescent shape, which is just two letter C's, one inside of the other. So last time I had my moon on the bottom and my sun up on top, so I wanna see if I like switching them better. So I'm gonna do my moon up here on the top with a big letter C and a small letter C. And with my paintbrush, I'm going to do my big letter C. And inside, I'm going to do my small letter C. And hopefully, the more you paint these shapes, the better you're going to get. So you might actually start seeing your moon looking better than your first one or your sun looking better than the first one because we're giving you time to practice before we choose which one we're going to use for the project we're going to hang out in the hallway. Our next color that we're gonna paint with is going to be blue for our clouds so we can go ahead and not worry about washing. How big you make the sun and how big you make the moon will determine how many stars and how many clouds you can fit in your sky. So if you went too small on your moon and your sun, you're going to be able to do more clouds. If you made your moon big and your sun big, you're gonna be able to do less or smaller clouds. 
In our first picture, our clouds were all the same size, but you might have changed the amount of top pieces there were. For this one, I challenge you to try doing some clouds that are different sizes. Maybe down towards the ground, we'll have smaller clouds, and up towards the top, we can start doing larger clouds, and you can look at your space left over and ask yourself if you want to add some more. So if I have a small one here on the bottom, I might want to add one here. And if I have a small one down here, I might want to add a large or a medium one. Again, still leaving space to add stars when I'm done. Again, because blue is darker than yellow and orange, I didn't need to wash my brush. I can just rinse it in my water. I can spin and get blue loaded up. About 10 to 15 spins is really good. I'm going to do a small cloud down here. Again, if your clouds get too light but you would like them brighter or darker, don't add water, just add paint to your brush and go over it a second time and it'll make your blue darker. And this is the last thing we're doing with the large brush. So once you're done doing your ground, your sun, your moon, and your clouds, you can take this brush, you can wash it over at the sinks with soap and water. You can dump out and get clean water, and you'll be grabbing your small brush for the stars. So the last thing we're going to add to our medium painting is the stars so that we have some night sky and some day sky so that it looks more surreal. Just like the clouds, let's play with size of the stars. Let's do some small, some large, and if you have time and space, you can do medium. So if you have a big open space, maybe you want to do a bigger star. And remember, we're not doing the hard shaped stars. We're just doing the line stars because they're easier. And we already have really large shapes. We have the large shape for the ground, the clouds, the sun, and the moon. So we don't need to add more shapes to this. We can still let people know that they're stars by just using a plus sign and then diagonal, diagonal. So I have a large space. I did a large star, small space, small star, big space, big star, big space, big star, small space, small star. And again, you can add as many as you want, but because we're on the medium version, changing the size so that they're not all the same will make it more interesting to look at. When you go to paint your stars, because they're skinny and small, we're going to use a skinny and small brush. This one's red. Get a little bit of water. We're going to do purple again so that it looks more like a night sky. And purple is dark, just like blue.
Once you're happy with the amount of scars filling in your space, you can wash off your brush. And if you have time left in class, you can do the hardest version of the background. That way next week, all of your paintings will be dry. You get to pick which one is best and we'll start putting the building on top.